All right, I'm gonna try something new here. Hope I don't mess this video up. I've got the GoPro right in front of me with the media mod. See if I can get rid of the microphone. I have a feeling it's gonna sound like crap, but we're gonna go for a spin and mainly because I didn't take it over the garage. This is my friend Sean at uh, Precision Sport Industries car, PSI in Orlando. Uh, he's starting a really cool YouTube channel, so do me a favor before we even get started watching this, go over to Precision Sport Industries and subscribe because uh, they're gonna be doing all kinds of cool stuff though. I think they're the first ones to have this thing lowered and wheels on it. So it has Titan, uh, what are these, TS5s I think? But this isn't a spec video. This is a, Maddie is an M3 lover and does the new M3 interest me? I'm not really here to hate on it. Probably not gonna love it. Uh, I actually drove it last night, so I'm cheating on you a little bit here, but let's see what mode do I have it in here. So let's go set up. Let's get it in. Turn the camera to turn off. All right, so I have engine and sport plus. Gear shift assist on, chassis in sport plus. Let's take that to sport. Let's do steering on sport and braking on sport. Okay, so then, then I have MDM mode engaged. And Sean uh, is to get the braking service done. Uh, so I asked him, what's my, uh, what's my red line limit? <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, keep it below five, so. I'm gonna honor honor the wishes. But uh, so I drove this last night, and I I already like it more than the uh, like it more than the um, the F80. It is you can feel the size of it. Uh, it feels really really big. Uh, but the I like to sit up reasonably close. So for as, as tall as I am, I'm six two two. Ish. And um, the seats, I love the seats. These are the uh, competition sport buckets or whatever the heck they are called. The carbon back sport buckets are freaking amazing. Uh, and uh, I think um, I think I wouldn't get the car without these. They're incredible. A little, a little tricky to get in and out of. Uh, the bolster is probably going to get beaten up over time. So hopefully somebody, somebody will make some bolster protectors for it. The car's not warm yet. Yeah, it's at 130-ish. I think the operating temp's about 210. Um, this is the six-speed manual. Really easy to drive. I got in it last night and just drove. Just I wanted to get a quick assessment, so I drove like four or five miles before I made the video. Uh, and uh, I, I, I like the driving experience a lot more than the F80. Um, one thing I did notice is, and, and this will probably change with tunes if they ever, you know, if they, they'll probably have to do a lot of piggybacking on these and, until somebody cracks the ECU open and sees how they can, how they can break the new Bosch encryption. But I think um, there's quite a bit of lag in this car, I feel like. Even if you're even if you're in the right gear, I feel like there's a momentary, like, you know, typical turbo like that. It takes a few seconds for the car to engage. Now, again, I've taken it to about 5,000 RPMs, maybe six, Sean. <laughs> um, and uh, the beauty of these, you know, the, the current BMW turbos is that they tend to stay in boost. They seem to tend to... Um, they, you know, pull like a freight train all the way to red line. So whereas a lot of turbo cars will fall flat on their face, um, these these hang on and you know the, the the torque. If you look at the torque curve, it rises pretty quickly and then it's flat all the way to red line, which makes it feel more linear. You know, the horsepower output is more linear than other turbo cars. And the sound of this is way better. There's not a lot of extra going on here, uh, unlike the. Unlike the F80, where you have all this weirdness, all this weird bull crap, um, this one just seems to do. It's just simpler. Uh, the S58, I think it's the S58, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the S58. So the S58 just seems more 
simple and linear, and I would be willing to bet they could probably could probably make this car sound decent. Unlike the F80, it took forever for them to get uh, equal length headers, or equal length exhaust, I should say, an equal length mid-pipe with all those little squigglies that active, and uh, I think there's another company that came out with a, another option that helped the car out, but the thing that I don't, I'm not in love with this is it's just so big. It's a huge car, and I just like the F80, um, I hate the, the M4 version. I just think it looks terrible. Um, where this, you know, if you're going to do this, I think you've got to do, you've got to do the, um, the M3. It's just more aggressive. I think it looks better. I'm going to roll this guy here just in case he's going, making the turn. No rubbing from the, uh, I want to say he's, these are 2021s, I think is what the, uh, the TS5s, the, um, uh, the Titan 7s that he has on here and he has uh, it's actually set up really well he has some um, AST springs on the car it feels great I mean turn in's nice handles well no shimmy no shake but you know Sean always does the, does things well he's got the car pretty low but I think he wants to go a little lower there's just so much torque coming out of any any turn yeah I mean this is great I mean I, I, I don't think I ever said that about an F80. I feel like this is an, a refined F80 is really what it is with a big pig nose. And when you're in the car, you can't even see, you know, the hood is so long, you can't even see any, any, any problem with it. So, I, I, you know, again, I don't think it's a huge deal um, in the car. It's one of those things outside of the car. I, I hate it. Everybody hates it. Um, you know, it, it, it does, it, it, I wouldn't say it looks better in person, like everybody's saying, you gotta see it in person. I think it just doesn't, like, it doesn't occur to you as much in person. Like, you're not, you know, in, in photos, you're seeing all these, you know, three-quarter front views of the car, and it's like, you don't have any option but to look at the giant grills. But, you know, in person, you're looking at the all the carbon fiber and roof and all the other stuff. I think that the rear angle, I think the rear of the car is, again, it's too big. Everything about this is too big. Uh, but this is a good family car. I mean, I, I think that the 3 Series, I think that these modern, the F80 and the G80, I think that these are more practical than, like the F10 M5 I bought, which is a bigger car than this, has a huge trunk. These don't have as big of a trunk, and they have a more usable back seat. You know, where, where I'm sitting, you could put another six-foot person behind me and not have much of an issue uh, with... Um, with with your ability to fit uh, you know a family of four in it in an, in an m3 it's pretty awesome for that purpose we'll turn here i do like you know i can rev match just fine but i do like the the auto rev match feature it's nice I, i'd find it i'd probably use it most of the time and again this is a car that i feel like you can just get in and drive it and shift it you're not going to be stumbling around if you can drive a, a manual it's really really simple the you know, the, the shifter feels just like an F80, so it feels the same to me. Um, the brakes uh, feel better than the F80. Uh, now it's been a while since I've been in one, but these are these are the steel brakes, and they're super super responsive. Feels very much G, much like like GT350. Where I always felt like the GT350 had some really great pedal feel, and really felt like all that weight would be transferring through my the back of my head when I'm uh, when I'm uh, hard on the brakes coming into a entering into a turn see there's that little little turbo lag that I don't love and you know this thing I feel like you know it slides around quite a bit when you're you know when you're really in it um, again I'm not I'm not gonna take it to red line here a brand new car so you have to wait for that but I mean that's a 5,000 rpm pull fourth gear and I was doing a hundred you know it's this is a really really fast car really fast there's no more apologizing you know us you know E36 E46 E92 guys are like you know it's all about the driving experience uh, this car is all about just pure fast I feel like 
feel like there's a little bit of soul back in this car, minus the freaking grills. So, um, the thing I haven't been able to answer for myself is, you know, first of all, do I want a car? Do I want this thing? I love, I don't, I know people don't like this, but I love this interior. I love the seats. I love the steering wheel. I love the gauges. The audio system's great. I like the, you know, the transmission's fine. It's not like your normal, it's not Porsche or, you know, S2000 like, but it's more engaging. You know, it's not as rubbery. Uh, and then I noticed kind of cool things like when you're when you're stopped and idling, as soon as you let out the clutch, the valves close, and when you put the clutch back in, the valves reopen again. Just some neat things like that that I think are, are, are well thought out on this car. But the heads-up display is pretty good, pretty subtle, and in the right spot. I think that's better than it, than it was on the F80. So you know, in general, I think that. This is right. I mean, it, it feels really good. This is clearly going to be very modifiable. Um, it doesn't sound good, but it doesn't sound god awful. There's no farting. There's a little bit of overrun. You know, if you revved on the car at idle, you know, just revved it while you're while you're standing still. But and you know, all this you're hearing, the vast majority of that is is pumped in sound. But, you know, I think with uh, some downpipes and exhaust, I, I don't think you're going to get all that extra bull crap that I hate on the, on the F80. You know, that fartness. The, you know, same thing with the M2. Everybody's always talking about the M2. The M2 competition is great. Well, I'd rather have an N55 M2 just so I don't have to deal with the crappy sound. Just watch. It's just even, even shifting at 5. I mean, this thing is just a freight train. So fast, so smooth. So you know, I feel like that. I'm talking so fast, I normally don't talk this fast when I'm uh, when I'm talking about a car. I don't call what I do a car review. This is just my experience of you know what I'm what I'm experiencing. I think I'm about to go detail this thing. Um, yeah, it's 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 good. So if if there's if there's a fix for the grill, if they do something different in the future, um, I could see myself buying one of these. But I'm not I'm not like totally enthralled with it. Ugh, I want to go to Redline so badly. It's pretty fast. Come on, Sean. I should text them. Hey, I'm trying to make a video here promoting your channel. Go to go to PrecisionSportIndustries.com. Go to Precision Sport Industries on YouTube. Follow them on Instagram. Does that give me enough to go to Redline? Here, we'll go to six. Just six, Sean. Sorry. Jeez. That's the third gear. Brakes are really good. Really good. What's that rattle? There should be no rattling in an M3. try hard. God, the brakes are really good. These seats are fantastic. The headlights are great. Oops. That second gear pull. <laughs> I can't even imagine when you tune this thing and it gains like 100 horsepower. I mean, these are going to be easily in the 600 horsepower with a freaking simple tune some down pipes and uh yeah i think that uh this guy doesn't want any of them freaking destroy it, that challenger in this car shifting at 5,000 still destroy it he has no idea is that vibrating sorry sean your m3's falling apart
steering wheel. Got it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I almost bought one. It's not the steering wheel. What is it? So I almost bought one a few weeks ago. And then I listened to better judgment. I got too many cars. I really want an E46 M3. Um, models are just wait on these because the next, the second, third, fourth version of these is always better. So just sit tight. Um, you know, the competition package has more horsepower, which is nonsense. You got to get this in a manual. Don't be some millennial douchebag. Learn how to drive it. Just buy it and throw yourself. Just jump into the pool head first. So if you're a millennial, you can't drive a stick. Come rent a car, the manual. It's kind of hard to do. But come see Uncle Matty. I'll teach you how to drive it. Don't be a freaking baby. You gotta learn how to drive. Yeah. You don't want none. Not gonna be racing in Sean's car.
This should be your family car that you go out and cruise around in. You freaking decimate everybody. And you're, you know, trying to drive, you know, you're on the highway or something like that. And you can still have a lot of fun with this in the mountains. You know, on a twisty, windy road. Obviously, you can take it to the track if that's your thing. Not my thing. These springs are great. This AST setup. If you have this car and you don't want to wait for coilover kits and stuff, just call Sean. I mean, this thing is good, ready to go. Ready to go. Got something weird going on here. Sounds good. I mean, just keep the clutch in, the valves stay open. Can't see, lady. Give you a little windows down drive here. Hopefully, this. Hopefully, the um, audio comes out for you. It's not all digital. Some of it's the car making noise. Oh man, yeah, this with down pipes. This is gonna sound way cool. Way cool. Let's do like a little third gear bog. You can hear the turbo spooling up. See, I don't mind turbo cars that sound good. But this will be my probably my last drive in a G80 unless I buy one. Because I'm about to go detail this thing. So whole detail series coming. I like that doing the third gear. I hear that turbo spinning. Glad we just beat the rain. Now hopefully I don't have to decon this in the rain. Go check out the live stream I did of uh, de deconning, which will be several days before this video comes out. So anyway, thanks for watching. This is my uh, experience on the uh, G80 M3. I don't think I'm getting one, but you never know with me. It's Tomorrow I'll wake up and say, you know, I'd really like to do a performance center delivery and uh, I don't know. So we're going to decon it. I'm going to do it right here. Always courtesy Rev. See, so watch this. You stop, the valves are open, take it, put it in neutral, and the valves close, and I push the clutch back in. I thought that was kind of a neat little touch. BMW, those nerd burbles are so stupid. If they don't make it naturally, we don't need that. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon.